Hey guys, Sierra here, and I am going to be talking to you about my Kuwait hacks. I lived in Kuwait for just under three years, and I have a lot of very strong feelings about things I feel like people should have told me before I got there. Now you can get on YouTube and find so many videos and so much information about living in Kuwait. But at the time, I could find next to nothing, like a couple of like Reddit articles, Ask Orbit threads, and um, all it really talked about was like what to wear and what not to wear. And I was like, okay. Um, so hopefully if you are currently living in Kuwait, if you're on your way to Kuwait, hopefully these are things that will help you out. So first mistake I made <laughs> was I got there thinking light sweaters, light jackets, you know, the occasional pants would do it. Not at all, not at all, because you have to protect yourself from Kuwait weather. So first thing is, it does get a little cold. Um, of the three winters that I spent there, um, it varies. Like the first winter I think was the coldest. And the next year, I did all this talk about how cold it got and it was cold for like two weeks. And then the year after that, it was like similar to what we would call fall weather, but we had a lot of rain, um, lots of flooding, lots of closing schools down. You definitely need some, at least one pair of boots. Um, whether that be like an everyday comfy boot, whether it be, you know, a stylish boot or whatever, but there's gonna come a time where you wanna both stay warm and protect your feet from the sand, dust, dirt, um, mud if it rains, um, sloth, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, especially depending on where you live. Like certain areas um, have more pavement and some areas don't. And where I lived, there isn't very much pavement. And even where there was pavement, they were always like pulling stuff up and digging holes. And so if I walked anywhere, I needed to protect my feet. Sweaters, um, cardigans, things to cover up, not only because it gets, it does get chilly in the winter time, but also because even when it's hot outside, it's really cold inside. Like you go to some places and the AC is just ridiculous. And that's a, another thing to be aware of. That's gonna be an adjustment for your body. If you don't live in a really hot place that has really cold AC, your body is gonna need to adjust to walking in and out of extreme temperatures. Um, so you may, you may get like a little cold, um, I got the flu on my last year and I, if you've ever had the flu, you know what I'm talking about, but I thought I was dying. Like my, my body was just, it wasn't my body. Um, so just be careful. Um, you could react to the sand and the dust that could affect your, your breathing, um, the pollution. I'm going to get more into that later, but clothing wise, you want to have boots, you want to have um, long sleeve things, you wanna have warm things um, that you can cover up. Now, <clears throat> these warm things are not just for the winter <laughs> because right around January, February time where it's still technically winter, um, we get a lot of sandstorms. And when those sandstorms happen, you do not wanna be caught like out in Kuwait without a scarf, a pair of sunglasses or I'm not kidding you. I know people that wear goggles. Like I know people that carry like actual goggles with them, like the kind that you would wear if you were doing like a winter sport or a sport in the desert. Um, mask, whether you have the disposable mask, the reusable ones, um, or you have one of those, um, those masks that you can attach to a visor. I've seen all of those. You don't want to be slapped in the face by sand. You just don't because Sand gets everywhere. If you've ever been to a beach, you know it gets everywhere. It'll be in your teeth, it'll be in your nose, it'll be in your lungs, it'll be in your eyes. So do not get caught out in Kuwait in a sandstorm without having scarves, a scarf, glasses, and some sort of some sort of mask. You can use the scarf to cover your mouth if you want. Ladies, your hair, or gentlemen, if you have hair, you don't want to be in a sandstorm with freshly washed hair. You just got your hair done. It, it, it gets in and even when it gets dusty in like the spring and summertime the winds blow guess what happens so does the dust 
So carry those things with you. So I promise you the moment you don't carry it, it'll be like the moment you didn't take your umbrella outside. When there's a sandstorm and there's rain, it is orange, like a nice rust color orange. So um, if you have your own vehicle and you're out driving, you can expect to be covered in orange raindrops. <laughs> Um, if you are outside and you're wearing a light color and you don't have anything to cover with, orange sandy raindrops. Moral of the story, be prepared guys. Just be prepared. Scar said it best. All right, getting on to my list, the bus. The bus is your friend. It is your friend. My favorite bus is the airport bus. Now it's becoming more popular but when I first started riding it, most people didn't know it existed. It cost one KD to get from Mavula to the airport. If you take a taxi and you have a taxi guy and you're in good with him, you might you might be able to get there for four four KD. And then when you arrive back in Kuwait and you're on your way back to your house, minimum seven KD, eight KD, just to get from the airport in the airport taxi to your place of residence. I refuse. I 100% refuse. The only time I've ever done it is when I was able to split it with someone. But no, I'm not doing it. It's just not happening. So what I do is I take the airport bus. So you can Google it. Um, they have a lot more advertising now. Like I think I saw before I left in the Jazeera terminal, they have um, like a huge sign up saying like which bus goes where. I used to take the X1. Um, I think it was the X1. And that ran back and forth from the airport to Fat Hill. Supposed to come every half hour. And then I think between the hours of like midnight and 6 a.m. every hour. But it's Kuwait. So it's not necessarily every half hour. I say if you want to be at the airport, let's say you have a flight that leaves at 2 o'clock. I would go outside to the bus stop by 11, 11, 11 You're bound to catch either the... 10.30 bus that's coming late, the 11 o'clock bus that might come on time, or the 11.30 bus that's coming early. So just kind of like plan to hang out for a little while, but get there, get situated, and um, they'll pick you up. It's only 1KD. Some places it's a little cheaper depending on where you live, but my bus was only 1KD. And so 1KD sounds really good compared to seven or five or four. And it's air conditioned, they have free Wi-Fi, and there's usually no one on the bus. Most passengers that I've ever been on the bus with no more no more than like eight it's like eight of us total and it's a smooth ride now it's not the kind of bus that's going to drop you off exactly where you live um i was fortunate to be on a main street where i lived so i could literally just walk outside of my um apartment and just kind of wave the bus down and he would stop and on the way back he would drop me off on the other side of the street and i just had to cross over but for 1kd i will do it i don't care how much luggage i have um, so yes, the airport bus. The city bus. City bus is pretty efficient. Now the city bus is going to be a lot more packed, especially um, between peak hours. So you, if you're going to take the city bus, super cheap, like feels cheap, but um, be prepared to deal with, you know, um, sporadic timings and maybe standing room only. But either way it goes, the bus is, is a great option, especially with the fluctuating price of taxes. Moving on, groceries. Okay, so shopping in Kuwait was actually one of my favorite things to do. Um, I found that like between Lulu's, the Sultan Center, and the co-op, I could pretty much find everything I needed. Oh, and Safeco, love Safeco. It's really, really far away, but I love Safeco. Um, I think it was like, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you, you're definitely gonna get fresh produce. It's pretty easy to find like vegan cheese and things like that, even like vegan mayonnaise, all those sorts of things. And one of the things that I really, really, really like about living in Kuwait is the convenience. Convenience for sure. And you can get anything delivered, you can get anything delivered in Kuwait, like anything. So um, I, would, I would look into getting your groceries delivered. If you know what you want, and you're, you, you've like gone to the grocery store a couple of times and you've gotten familiar, 
they definitely won't have everything on the website for you to choose from so there's going to be certain things that you may have to go and pick up on your own but let's say you just want to like restock up on um some produce or some um cans of vegetables or frozen vegetables some meat anything like that really 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 easy and most most of the delivery is free some people charge you for delivery if you don't spend 10 kd but i mean 10 kd what when i don't think i've ever been to the grocery store and spent less than 10 kd if i'm making a trip to the grocery store i'm usually spending more like 20 30 40 kd so i can definitely you know take the free delivery they do give you a window so you, it has to be a time where like you can kind of chill be at home you know but if you don't feel like going out if you don't feel like weathering the traffic if you don't feel like going through the hassle of getting a taxi safeco um i know does same day and they have whatsapp i'll put their whatsapp number on here safeco has same day um Salton center i think it's next day lulu's i don't think delivers but um that may be changing i'm not sure but you can get groceries delivered and they bring it right to your door it's like the best thing ever the only con to it is like if you order garlic you're definitely not getting just one like you're getting a whole thing of garlic <laughs> but it's okay because garlic lasts a long time and then you know what i would do is i would either like take it to school give it to some of my co-workers give it to some of the nannies um or you know the cleaners and you know, people love free food so if you are not going to go through all of your garlic and you don't feel like chopping it cutting it and throwing it in a bag in the freezer then give it away i mean you're paying a couple hundred fills for a whole bag of garlic so um, that's one of my favorite things about living in Kuwait. Speaking of convenience, speaking of food, if you have never ho heard of a co-op, definitely check it out. Most cities in Kuwait have their own co-op. Some don't, like I lived in Mabula and Mabula didn't have its own co-op. Mabula didn't even have its own grocery store until like my last year there. Um, but of course, Kuwait is always changing. They're always improving, always doing construction, always building something. So. In a very short time, I had two grocery stores within walking distance. Um, or I guess I should say markets, not really a grocery store. Co-op, the co-op is like, it's, it's similar to like our farmer's market or our um, like flea market, like that sort of situation where everything is really fresh. Um, the prices are good. Um, it's the kind of place where like you, you're gonna get vegetables that you have to wash off your shelf Like you you might get vegetables where you can still see dirt. You can still see little bugs I think that's a good sign. That is a sign that my vegetables have not been tampered with or Processed with any sort of spray or preservant or whatever preservative not preservant um, But I love that I love the fact that I get to like have my vegetables still have the soil on them um, I found a lot of stuff at the co-op as well in the imported se section that wasn't available at like Lulu's or the Sultan Center. Like they had like goya beans. I love canned goya beans um, at the co-op. So I used to get those there. My favorite candies. Um, a lot of the American candy is starting to become more available, but there was a time where if I wanted Reese's, I had to go to the co-op. Check out the co-op, look it up, just type in whatever city or whatever area you live in and then co-op and it should come up or type in co-op near me um, and they pretty much have everything that the traditional grocery store has it's a little cheaper you save a little bit um, of money and um, they have some hidden gems so definitely 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 check out the co-op staying on the subject of food i want to talk a little bit about the spices so spices are readily available in kuwait if you come from a western country um that you know where we buy our spices in plastic containers if you like to cook and you're looking for spices all the hard to find spices that you would normally have to go to a specific store for you're going to be able to find them in kuwait you might even be able to find them in your local bakala which i will talk about in one second um they come in these little baggies and they're like 100 fills 500 fills and you get a good amount so if you go to Ikea or if you recycle your old spice containers, you can just keep them and put them in your spice container or get those little cute little jars that come with the spoons and the lids where you can open the lid, grab the spoon, sprinkle, you know, whatever it is. If there's something specific um, that you don't want to pay an import fee for or you, you know, think you won't be able to find, then bring that with you. But if you're good with just buying fresh spices like you would at the farmer's market, you're going to find that in Kuwait. 
Um, still on food. <laughs> still on food. I, I'm looking at my list and I'm like, mm, half of your items are about food. <laughs> but I guess it's okay because, you know, we need food to live. Sustainability. Talabat and carriage. For all of the lazy people out there or the people who just really enjoy relaxing, which is what I like to say, you know, don't call me lazy. I just really enjoy relaxing. Talabat and carriage can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So you have to be very careful because it can get out of hand. You can look back and go, wow, I spent 10 KD on Talabat today. Like just today, I spent 10 KD on Talabat. I ordered breakfast and then I ordered dessert and then I had lunch and then I had a snack. Like next thing you know, 10 KD later. The good thing is delivery fees are really cheap. Like if you're used to using like Uber Eats or Grubhub, it's not gonna be as expensive as that. It's gonna be like your your average delivery fee is about $2. Most times um, the delivery fee is 500 fills. Every once in a while you get one that's 1KD. Um, and those of us that have lived in Kuwait for a while are usually a little offended. Like, why are you charging me a KD for this? Um, but at the same time, do we really wanna get in our car and go get it? No. So, <laughs> Talabat and Carriage are your friend. Usually if there's a restaurant that's not on Talabat, you can find it on Carriage, um, which is why I use both. And Carriage, at least while I was there, was less used. So some restaurants delivered faster on Carriage because they weren't as busy as Talabat. If you're hosting a party, if you're having people over and you just find yourself running out of time, order a couple of pizzas, order some wings, order whatever you want on Talabat or Carriage. And they, back to the groceries, they also have grocery options as well. So like, I know they have like the Carrefour market if you like Carrefour um, and a bunch of other things like that. So ordering, delivering, convenience. One of the things I miss the most, <laughs> miss it so much. One of the things I miss the most about being a resident of the great state of Kuwait. Moving on and away from food. Okay, no, one more thing, the bakala. The bakala is like your bodega, your corner store, your convenience store, C store, whatever you call it. Um, it's the equivalent of like a gas station if you live in a place that doesn't have any of those things without the gas. So they're usually like these cute little shops um, and it usually will say bakala or supermarket on it. If you went to the grocery store but you forgot eggs or you forgot a certain spice or you forgot a can of corn or whatever, you can go to your bakala and you can get that. Um, you can also go and grab your favorite snacks. They usually have whatever drinks, chips, sugary, fattening stuff that we're not supposed to be eating. They usually have it at the bakala. Um, the hack is that you can ask for your Bacala man's number and they will deliver it to you because everything in Kuwait is about convenience. Now they don't charge delivery fees, but just as a as a general practice, um, if I order four cases of water that I don't feel like carrying from the Bacala across the street to my place and this lovely, lovely gentleman brings it to my door for me, I, I tip, I give him a little tip um, and then you get in good with the Bacala man and he answers all your calls and he's like, that's it, nothing else. And then he brings you free things. So you get in good, get in good with your Bacala guy, like get in good, be polite, smile. You will be amazed how far you can get by just like being polite and smiling in Kuwait. Um, and you know, the people that work in the service industry in Kuwait, they, they catch a lot of slack. So smile, be polite. Um, for the sake of smiling and being polite, but also because you get free stuff. Like, they will take care of you. My my Bacala guy, um, my fruit shop guy, used to get free stuff all the time. I'll go in to buy oranges, and he's like, here, take an apple. Go in to buy bananas, and he's like, here's some onions. Like, it's build relationships, smile, be kind. Um, all of those things matter. Okay, I think we can finally move on from food. MBK. MBK is a popular bank. Most people bank with MBK. Um, if you don't, I don't really have any hacks for you, except that I'm sure if MBK is doing it, Bergen Bank is doing it too, or you know whoever else you're banking with. But MBK has a WhatsApp number. They have a WhatsApp number. Um, I know that I should have started with this. Bank hours in Kuwait are a little different from what we're used to in the States. So, you know, typically in the US, 
you can get to a bank midday you can go for lunch you can um so you, you can find a branch in a grocery store that's open until six or seven at night not happening in kuwait you at, some branches are open until three most close at two <laughs> some are open until three and you'll find some that have that like close and reopen from five to seven right um but for the most part the banks are you have to like schedule around get to schedule your life around bank hours or go to the airport where the banks are open 24 hours so those are a couple of quick tips about getting to the bank but if you can't get there and you just have a quick question um they have a whatsapp so i will add the mbk whatsapp number below and they get back they get back to you right away like super quick um, if it's something they can't help you with, they are going to refer you to the call center, which I'll put the number on this video as well. Um, but yeah, the WhatsApp saved my life a couple of times. So I've been like, hey, can you answer this question for me? And they answer it right away. I don't have to call, be placed on hold or anything like that. Um, <gasps> maids, let me tell you, uh, I have had many conversations with taxi drivers, co-workers, just people that I meet about the idea that all Americans are rich. We're not. Um, most of us are in debt. But um, it is it is really, I'm really proud. I'm really proud to say that I could afford to pay top dollar for someone to come and clean my apartment. Um, you can find maids, um, they usually call them nannies, but you can find maids for really cheap um like honestly too cheap in my opinion so i refuse to pay someone that's come to clean my apartment like 2k an hour but you definitely can you know if if that's something that doesn't bother you morally or ethically you can find someone to come and clean your place for 2k an hour um the catch is usually they use your cleaning supplies so you have to make sure you're well stocked on rags cleaning things all the kind of stuff that they need to clean um but i personally think that 2k an hour is a little too cheap for you know somebody coming to clean my apartment so you find somebody you like pay them extra tip them give them a christmas gift um you know or or whatever holidays you celebrate um you know take care of them and then they'll take care of your apartment i've hired some of them to pack for me and um you know pay them for that and it's just literally things that i cannot afford in the United States, <laughs> it's above my pay grade. <laughs> but in Kuwait, I could, I could afford it. I could afford it. Like it's, it's living the good life. Moving on, um, staying on the subject of apartments. So I was a little spoiled. I lived in what I like to call an expat building. Um, one thing I will say is that even if you don't live in a building that is um, convenient, I'll say convenient, just back to what I was saying before, be kind, be polite, um, get in good with your Harris. Your Harris is like basically the property manager, then mother, <laughs> who, you know, kind of like does everything from maintenance to making sure that people you know, aren't in the apartment when they aren't supposed to be, you know, keep them watch, all that kind of stuff. Be kind to them, you know, get in good, build relationships. It matters, like, the, the little things matter. Stop and chat. Um, but the main reason I wanted to bring up apartments is because not everyone has central heat and AC. In fact, most people don't. Most people have central AC, um, but they don't have heat and as I was saying before it does get cold and even even if it's not a very cold winter if you are in a building that is made of cement and um, hard floors whether it's tile or wood or whatever you have in your apartment it's gonna get cold it is going to get cold because the buildings are are built to stay cool in the summertime or you know in the in the high temperature seasons so you're gonna get cold. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have heaters. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have adequate things to bundle up with, nice, comfy, warm comforters. Um, that's another thing that I feel like, like, like I said, my place had central heat. For my friends that didn't, they were like, it's so cold. 
And if you wake up at five in the morning or four in the morning to get ready for work and it's 30 degrees outside or three or four degrees Celsius, it's gonna be cold. Like it's been getting cold all night and it's gonna be cold. So stay warm, make sure you get heaters for your room. Keep that in mind if you are on your way to Kuwait or if you're getting adjusted or preparing for winter because it will be coming soon. Um, moving on. Oh, no, 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 I can't move on. Power outages, y'all. Y'all, seriously. In my apartment, however nice it was, and I did have a fairly nice apartment for a teacher, because <laughs> they get nicer, but you know, not for teachers. <laughs> um, in my apartment, I could not have three appliances running at the same time in my kitchen. I could not use the stove, use the oven, and wash clothes at the same time, because it would just shut off. Now, um, get acquainted with your breaker. You know, know where it is, because depending on where you live, how strong your um, electricity system is, you are going to need to um, flip that switch a couple of times. And just be conscious, like if, if you need to do laundry or let's say you have a roommate and your roommate wants to do laundry but you want to meal prep, you guys got to plan ahead because you can't do both. Not both, both means two. You can't do all three. So yes, keep that in mind. Um, moving on, your windows. All right, guys, listen, insulation, <laughs> insulation is not a priority in Kuwait. So this means you can look forward to sand and dust seeping through your cracks, whether it's under your door um, or through your window seals. The dust will creep in. I know people who have went, gone out and gotten those like iRobots, the robot vacuums, which I have one now and it works wonders. But if you wanna get one of those, program it to just kind of sweep your apartment or vacuum your apartment on schedule to keep the dust out. Yes, do that. Get you a microfiber dust cloth because you're gonna wanna be wiping down your surfaces. You literally could dust and then look the next day and go, I just dusted this line. That's another great thing about living in Kuwait. Most apartments come with everything. They come furnished down to the oven mitts. You should have dishes, you should have, you should have oven mitts, you should have broom, mop, um, mop bucket. You should have a trash can. You should have a vacuum. All of those sorts of things should come with your um, apartment. So um, that's, that's insulation on the sand front. Insulation on the rain front. I used to live on the seventh floor and my apartment flooded several times. Why? Because it doesn't rain that much in Kuwait. And when it does rain, we're not set up for it. We're not built for it. Um, e eventually, like on my final year in Kuwait, my apartment complex came around with this little gun of, I don't know what you call that stuff. Like I know what is in the tub, you call it caulk, but I don't know what it's called with windows. And like reinforced the windows. And then every time it rained after that, we were good. But my entire living room and bedroom flooded on the seventh floor. Not because the rain came all the way up to the seventh floor, but just because the rain hitting the window came right in. It was trickling down my walls. And so let's say you have some appliance that you keep on the floor. Maybe one of your robot vacuums, maybe his dock. All those things are at risk. So if it's gonna rain and you're not sure if your apartment is gonna flood, just do yourself a favor. Get your tiles ready, put some tiles down um, next to the window, get all of your cords and power extensions and power strips off the floor because it will flood. And it usually happens at night when you're sleeping and you wake up and you're like, my floor is wet. Why is my floor wet? My rug is wet. Why is my rug wet? Um, and that's the kind of thing where, you know, you, you get a rug wet, you gotta pull up all your furniture and then get someone else to clean it because it's not gonna fit in your washing machine. So be prepared for that. Don't be afraid to push your, your front desk or your maintenance to like come in and reinforce it if you do find that it's flooding. But I'm gonna tell you now, be calm, don't get frustrated because they're not, gonna, they're not going to know what to do. My first year when it flooded, I went down to the front desk and they were like, eh, eh. The, literally the faces they gave me. Um, and though it was frustrating, because I'm like, this can't be the first time it rained. This building is not that new. This can't be the first time it happened. How is this happening every year and you guys are just letting it happen? Um, but 
the point is it got resolved. Um, but I definitely wish somebody would have told me. Um, it would have saved me some time and energy. So yes, <laughs> be prepared for that. Oh, I let my iPad lie. That means I was chitter chattering. Um, let's next on the list. Parking, oh my goodness guys. Parking can be both magical and a headache. Most places, most nice places have ballet. Um, and you can ballet for like a KD, two KD. Some places get really fancy and charge you free. Um, but that is probably the best way to go because parking in Kuwait can be so stressful. But it's also really cheap. So let's say if you go to a place that has a parking ramp, you go, you park for a couple of hours, you come out, it may cost you 200 fills, maybe 250. It's pretty cheap. Um, a lot of places, a lot of places of business, business have, um, did I say that right? Places of business, businesses. You guys know what I mean. A lot of those places have their own parking areas, but imagine how many places have their own parking and then imagine twice as many not having their own parking. <laughs> so, um, get used to getting creative. Um, I would say be careful because they definitely started cracking down on traffic violations um, my last year in Kuwait and I'm sure they're gonna continue with that. So be careful because I did see my very first tow truck in my last two months before I left Kuwait. I was like, oh, finally. Because another thing that people will definitely tell you is that people are not afraid to park behind you, block you in, and then just go about their day. And you wanna leave, but you can't find them. This happens both at home, like when you're parked in your parking spot where you think you're safe. And this also happens in like out in public. So um, it has happened to many people. Be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. But you, the, the plus side is if you don't mind paying for parking, you can probably pay for parking, even if it is valet, um, for pretty cheap, and it is worth it to relieve yourself of the headache. Just do it. Oh, speaking of parking in cars, another really cool thing is that if you're not like crazy about going to get your car washed um, all the time, or if you just don't have the time or the energy, um, you can, every time you park your car, there's gonna be somebody there asking you if they can wash your car. And they're just like, oh, just one KD. Throw me KD, they'll wipe it down. Um, some people feel like, no, I'm not doing it because what water are they using? Is it clean? Um, but I personally feel like my car in Kuwait is almost never clean. So if you if you want to get the dust off my windows and, you know, make it more visible for me, have edit, okay? Go for it. Um, otherwise, you can get your car washed at um, various gas stations. I like Ula. I think I'm pronouncing that right, O-U-L-A. It's my favorite place to get my car washed because they do inside and outside. And it's like 500 feels more than Alpha, I think is what it's called. I think it's A-L-F-A, where they only do the outside. So yes, parking, cars, all that jazz. Moving on, oh, shipping. This is a good one. So I was really fortunate to, have people that looked out for me and they would just hit me up and be like, hey, Sierra, I'm going on base to get some things. You want anything? Those people, <sighs> true friends indeed. True friends. Or the friends that would just grab things that they knew I would like and then bring them to me. <sighs> Thank you. Definitely appreciate you. You made my time in Kuwait very special. I would recommend opening an Aramex account, especially if you know you do a lot of online shopping and it's pretty much you're pretty much guaranteed and ensured that like your, your package is gonna arrive. They're gonna communicate to you when, and so you can be at the house waiting for it, whatever. If you ship things to your address in Kuwait, you may get it, you may not. It might not be 50-50, but that's pretty much how it goes. Like most people that I know that order things, you may get it, you may not. And so if it's important to you that you get it and you don't wanna like DHL it, consider opening an Aramex account. It's, a, it's, a, it's an investment that you will be glad about. Moving on, 
I like saying that. I need to talk show. So the next item on my list is Shield. Uh, I love Shield. I love Shield. Shield is Groupon for Quake. So that's Shield, S-H-E-E-E-L, um, dot com. And you go to Shield, you sign up for an account, you can get all sorts of things. Discounts on um, cosmetics, like if you wanna get your eyebrows done, if you wanna do that like earwax candle thing, if you wanna get laser hair removal, if you want to get a massage at the Hilton or at the Millennium, um, they have all sorts of discounts that you can be, that you can look out for. I got my um, air purifier from Shield because when you go into the grocery store, all the air purifiers are like 69 KD. I'm not doing it. I got mine for 30, and it worked fair, it worked fairly well. So I got my air purifier on Shield. Um, most things on Shield are like coupons, like coupon that you order, and then you submit the voucher to whichever company that you um, ordered from. But you can also get things shipped, also like Groupon, which is how I got my air purifier. Transportation. So we talked a little bit about the bus earlier, but everyday transportation, if you don't have a car or if you, or if you don't have a friend that has a car, which I'll tell you how to get a car in just a minute. Um, taking a taxi, walking, riding your bike um, is probably gonna be your best bet. But walking in Kuwait. Many women feel uncomfortable doing that. Many for for various reasons. Um, for the the stigma that like if you're a woman walking in Kuwait, you must be walking for only one reason. Um, you know, I I had a bike while I was there. I enjoyed riding my bike. Um, all those sorts of things. Nothing was gonna stop me from taking a stroll um, or riding my bike. If I didn't feel like driving, if I didn't want to lose my parking spot, seriously, it's a thing. Um, then I would walk. And if there was someone that harassed me, I was just very vocal about it. I consider myself to be quite a polite person, but I do not play when it comes to being rude. Like, don't stare at me, um, you know, and don't talk to me. I, I don't wanna talk to you, I don't have to talk to you. So um, I am the kind of person who just kinda like, what are you looking at? Get out of my face, be gone, shoe fly, don't bother me. And if you bring any attention, which if you're a woman walking down the street, you're gonna bring attention, period. But if you bring any attention to a guy that's like being weird or being creepy, he will flurry. He will go away. And none of that bothers me. I think maybe because harassment is something that happens to me everywhere. Even just like in the US, in the gas station, like people come and talk to you about stuff. People come and ask you for money. People come and ask you for your number. I am very accustomed to this line of harassment. So it doesn't bother me one way or another. Um, you don't want, you, you just, you don't want it. What are the kids saying these days? You don't want the smoke. You don't want this smoke. You don't want it. Cause I got it. I, I got the smoke. So that's walking in quick. <clears throat> Taxiing. Taxiing can be a problem. Prices are constantly rising. There, there, there isn't a real regulation on how much taxi drivers can charge you. Um, they hear your accent, they assume you have more money, they charge you double. Uh, you're a woman, they think you're not gonna argue with them or haggle with them, they charge you more. Ha! <laughs> you thought, I, I got time, okay? I have the time, I have the time. Oh, you wanna charge me three KD to, go 10 minutes, oh, okay, no thank you, no thank you. And then either they drive away and you wait for the next one, or they don't and they say, okay, okay, two Katie. And I go, no, I'm not paying you more than 1.5. Um, so if you're not cool with 1.5, then you can keep driving so I can get another taxi. And then most, most times they'll be like, all right. Every once in a while you get one that's like, you're not gonna find anybody cheaper than me. And I'm like, you don't know me very well, do you? So, don't let up. Um, if you don't mind, if you feel like, look, I've allocated this much money to taxis this week and I'm still under my, my limit, go for it. But if you're like me, who's like, you're not about to play me. You're not about to charge me twice as much or three times as much as you charge everybody else. No, sir. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe at peak time, if we're gonna be in traffic for 20, 25 minutes to get me there, maybe I can understand you charging more 
you know, or surplus surcharge, whatever you call it, in peak hours. But if it is two o'clock on a Sunday, you not getting me. You're just not. So, sis, don't let them play you. Um, let's see. What else on my list? Oh, how could I forget? Kareem. I said I was gonna talk about that. So Kareem is like Uber for Kuwait. Kareem is like when I first got to Kuwait, Uber wasn't in my area and neither was Kareem, so I never used it. But times are changing. And Kareem is readily available in Mabula now. And Kareem is a great way to get a strict price on your trip. So you get on Kareem and it is regulated and you're paying this this driver this much and you can choose to still pay cash or you can add your card to the account and you can charge your card um, but Kareem is great you, you they, they can call you um, you have their license plate number so if you're concerned about um, you know like fake taxi drivers or people that might want to cause you harm Kareem is a good way to go because there's a trail um, and if you have the same concerns that I have is not being overcharged just because I'm a woman just because I'm American and you think I'm rich um, Kareem is also a great way to go. I literally, not kidding you guys, literally had a taxi driver to tell me one time, when are you going back to your country? And I was like, oh, I'm not sure yet. Um, well, and he said, okay, well, when you go back, take me with you. And I was like, is this a marriage proposal? Like, what's happening here? And he's like, no, 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 I can be your personal driver. Sir, <laughs> I am a teacher <laughs> on a teacher salary riding in your taxi right now. What makes you think that when I go back to the US, I can afford to have a personal driver? I mean, one day I'm on my way, I'm building my wealth right now, you know, and maybe my children will have personal drivers. But me, me sir, <laughs> no, 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 no. I cannot afford a personal driver. Last thing, the brothers and sisters of Kuwait. So, um, if you're familiar with the Brothers and Sisters brand, um, it's a chain of Facebook groups that are in different countries around the world. And it's basically a place where black people come together and gather. Or if you're new to a place and you're trying to connect with black people, you can. It's black people from all over. Western countries, black people from the Caribbean, um, black people from Africa, just people of color coming together having conversation, hosting events, doing great things. Um, so get on Facebook, look for the Brothers and Sisters of Kuwait. I will also plug that below. And um, it's a great group. When I was there, we, we made sure we tried to do an event every month, um, whether it was a party, a social, a meetup, a something physical, something sports related, um, a game night. We love game nights. We love game nights. So if you're new to Kuwait, if you're new to the area, or even if you're not new, but you're looking to meet more people, you're looking for something to do on a Friday, Saturday night. Um, sorry, I've been in the US too long. On a Thursday, Friday night. <laughs> um, then definitely check out the Brothers and Sisters of Kuwait. It's definitely something that I can say with confidence shaped my time in Kuwait like absolutely 100% shaped my time there and met some really awesome people. I miss them all the time. Um, okay guys, uh, I am done rambling. I am done, I did it. I said, I've been saying I was gonna do this video for like a year. <laughs> Here I am, no longer living in Kuwait, finally doing it, but I did it. I truly hope that um, this video was helpful to you, that you learned something new um, and that I can help make your life a little easier. Um, a little smoother, a little more convenient. That's my favorite word while living in Kuwait. Last thing I will say is I'm also going to um, post the link to this really, really, really awesome blog by a dear friend of mine named Holda. If you are um, acquiring your NOC and you're dealing with the Kuwait embassy in your country, it's a very strenuous process um, just to even get to Kuwait before you before your work visa is complete. And so, um, she went through the trouble of putting together some tips and tricks, some shortcuts, well, not shortcuts, but just information and some need to knows. So if you are on your way to Kuwait or if you're thinking about going to Kuwait, check out her blog. It's really, really, really helpful. And um, hope you enjoy your time in the great state of Kuwait.